you can use Perplexity to get some amazing insights into any research field. The first thing I'd like to do is head over to Perplexity. Oh, look at this. Welcome know-it-all. That's a bit cheeky perplexity, but this is the bar that is going to give us that magic. Now, the first thing I like to do is go down here and make sure that when I'm starting a research project, I'm looking at all, I'm looking at everything that perplexity can get, because then I'm going to go a little bit deeper into academic after that. And then I can use these never ever go to Reddit for your academic information. And YouTube, it will be useful if there's some lectures, but ultimately it's this top two that I'm most interested in. So, you can use this. For example, I'm just starting a research project and the imposter syndrome is hitting hard. I would like to know the current state of, and then you can put your current field, the field of OPV devices quickly before my supervisor comes past my office smelling like stale coffee. Now, one thing I love about Perplexity is you can turn this on pro and pro just means that it works a little bit harder for you and it gives you these sort of like search options where it tries to understand the question a little bit more. And if it doesn't understand exactly what you want, it will ask clarifying questions and then it will tell you what it's doing and then it will found, um, you know tell you what it found. So the one thing I love about Perplexity is it gives you its sources. This isn't common for a lot of AI output, but you can see here it's got up to 17 other things. These are all the places that it went to to find information, and then it distills it down into a nice little digestible answer for you. Mwah! Tastes great. So here, organic photovoltaic devices are rapidly evolving, blah, blah, blah. And then we got key advancements. Then it's got the reference. Then it's got materials and structure. Then it's got the reference. Then it's got challenges and the reference. Then it's got the commercialization and application. So it's got everything you need to know um, about the current state of a research field as a snapshot in what? Like a few paragraphs, which is really great. You can obviously just rely on that. But doing these broad searches where you're looking at web, you're looking at articles and just anything that pops up is the place to start. And you can obviously combine this with something like Wikipedia um, just to kind of get an overview of a particular research field. But this is where I go all the time. One of the most important things about a research field is understanding what sub themes are underneath that research field. That allows you to know what sub theme you're most interested in, but also what sits adjacent and near to your theme so that then you can sort of like look at other sort of uh, areas of research. Why am I saying sort? of so much. Who knows? But this is the prompt I use. It's late on a Friday and I'm fed up of reading research papers. What are the important research themes in the OPV device field? So when I searched, I did allow Pro to be on. And the one thing get rid of that. And the one thing that you'll see here is that you get five searches a day and um, it reloads every four hours, which is pretty generous if you ask me. So Pro Search did this. It understood my question. It didn't have to ask any clarifying stuff. It went to the web and it found 18 sources and then it kicks out the answer, which is just, you know, exactly what I want. Thank you so much. So now I can go into a research field, not only understanding the current state of things, but also starting to get an idea of the sub themes and topics under a particular research field. So here we've got material development, we've got device architecture and morphology, we've got efficiency and stability. So all of these things, I'll start thinking about whether or not I want to delve deeper. So what you would have noticed in this is we're starting very, very broad. And then the next layer is trying to work out the categories of different research themes under that broad search term. So OPV, organic photovoltaic devices, and then under under that the different sub themes and you can get those for your research field really easily with something like perplexity. Um, and then I want to delve a little bit deeper. So this is where I turn on academic. So at the moment, my two searches have been in this all, but now I want to go to academic. So I click on this and this is what I um, wanted to know about. So I use this and I said, well, okay, this is the second search where I was saying, tell me the research themes. I wanted tandem and inverted structures. So now I just sort of like delve a little bit deeper into that research field. So I can say, I want to know about tandem and inverted structures in OPV devices to see if this research field can save my PhD from failure uh, and give me some well-known papers in the field. So it went away. It didn't um, need pro this time. I didn't turn it on. Um, and you can see here, it's got tandem and inverted structures in OPV devices are significant areas of research and you've got 
tandem structures, you've got research papers. If I click here, you can see it actually goes to the primary research article that it's cited in the work, which is just brilliant. Now we don't need to spend hours reading around a research field. We can now be really targeted in the sorts of stuff we want to read going forward. So we've also got inverted structures and OPV devices and additional resources. Now, all of these searches, I would highly recommend looking at this related search down here. Make sure that you have a look to see if anything makes sense going forward. You don't even need to come up with your own prompts anymore. This is quite often one of the best ways to delve deeper is allow it to kind of suggest the next steps for you. So here, what are the latest advancements in tandem structures for OPV devices? I'll click on that. You can see it's doing exactly the same thing. It's coming up with its sources and an answer. So not only do I get the primary research articles, but I also get a nice distilled answer that I can read now and understand it, you know, very, very quickly. It has never been as easy as this to really understand any research field quickly, and I think that's incredible. But the power doesn't stop there. This is probably my favorite way to use it, which is when I head over and uh, I'm ha I say, I'm having one of those days, help me understand this research paper. So quite often I will come across a research paper and I'm like, what on earth does all this mean? And so I will put it in. It's very easy to use. You just drag and drop. I'll do that for you now. I'll show you how to drag and drop. Are you ready? Here Here's all of my papers and we're going to drag and drop this one. Oh, uploading. There we are. As easy as that. That's great, isn't it? YouTube gold that. Um, but ultimately, I dragged and dropped a research paper there and I said, I'm having one of those days. Help me understanding. And it says, certainly. They're always so enthusiastic to help. I love AI. Thank you, AI. Thank you so much. So it says, this research paper is titled That's That's it's, it's titled this, it's got that, and then we've got introduction, transparent electrodes, current standards, and look, it does quite often really lean towards bullet points. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm just saying that if you're not really a fan of bullet points, AI at the moment probably is gonna set you off. So um, I do like the fact it just gives me little bullet points of information to read, but for some people I think it's a little bit too um, sort of constrictive and restrictive on how they want to explore research papers, but I love the little bite-sized pieces of information. They tend to love bullet points, oh well. But yeah, that's it, and you can see I can now read this entire research paper and get an idea of its significance, its impact to a field by just putting it in, asking a simple question and now I've got this which is much easier to read arguably than the well not arguably because research papers are horrible to read um, but now I've got this nice little summary that I can read and understand going forward and once again you know we've got these follow-up questions that's what I'd look at if I wanted to go deeper and deeper into a certain research article so the general theme here start broad narrow it down to sub themes explore within those sub themes <laughs> and then look at papers within those sub themes. Everything can be done with Perplexity AI and I am blown away with its power. If you like this video, go check out this one where I talk about how to use Perplexity AI for research. I talk about more ways that you can use it. It's terrifyingly smart.